Well, hello. Today we're going to be learning how to use the NASA API. That is, we are going to be requesting data from NASA. Not the NASA. That's right, the National Aeronautic and Space, I think it's program, but there's an A there. Association? Who knows? Well, someone knows, but whatever. Um, so we're going to be requesting data from the NASA API, and we're going to take that data and display it to the user. And really, that's really all you do with uh, APIs, right? You request data, and then you display it to the user. Simple stuff here, simple stuff. We're just going to get in the rhythm. Um, now, you might remember, just a little bit of review, an API is just a way for two programs to talk to each other. So our program is going to be talking to the NASA program, and we're, our program is going to be saying, hey, can I get some data? And the NASA program is going to be like, sure, you can have that data, and then it's going to send it over, or this way, and then we'll be like, great, I got the data, and then we'll do something with it. Now, I just want to say also, I want to confront that you might see my face right now. In this time right now, this is uh, being recorded during the, the COVID crisis, you know, education is mi missing some of that human element to it. I just want to add some, a little bit of humanity here. Hey, hey, you and me, we're talking right now. I'm here. There's a human behind this whole thing. And I just want to say hi, and this is going to be a lot of fun. All right, so before we get started with this, I just want to go through what we're going to be looking at today. So today we're going to be using this um, API template, all right? Now, we'll be using this template for every single project that we do this whole unit, this whole unit's APIs. So I really want you to get used to this. You will see the same thing every single time. And I just want to show you once again what it looks like. If you go to the show button, this is what you get. It says API template. We have an input and a search button. Now, let's just change a few things. Well, let's just change this first thing to NASA API because, you know, let's customize things a little. Great. Uh, instead of API template here in the H1, let's call this NASA API. And so now you should see that it says NASA API up here. It says NASA API here. Now, we won't be doing any searching, but who cares about finishing that? But I just want to remind you what's here. We have an input, we have a button, and we have some content, all right? So right now, remember, we're gonna want to just make it so when we press this button, we request some data from uh, NASA, and then it'll put some more, it'll display something where it says content. So usually you press a button and then you display something to the user. So where we're gonna display it is here inside of this empty div right now that says content. We will add some content, content here early, later. Now in the JavaScript, you might remember this from last lesson, but what we've done is simply we've made a button, so the search button, right? We've added an event listener to it. When we click it, we're going to console log, the button has been pressed, and then we're gonna run this function, send API request. And this is where the magic happens, right here in this function. This is where we're going to actually send the request to for data from the NASA API, and then we'll do something with that data. But this is where we're, we're getting that data. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's make the magic happen, okay? So what we're gonna be doing today is first, I'd like you to Google NASA API. That is definitely not, that's NASA SAPI, which is apparently something else. We'll do NASA API. And what it should take you to is this screen, and we're going to say get started. And it asks you for some very basic information. You're just going to put in your name and your email, and don't worry about the application URL. We don't have one. I guess we do have one, but it's not important because it's optional. You press sign up, and what it does is it generates an API key. The reason you want an API key is, well, they want to give you an API key, is it's a personal identifier. Basically, it lets them know who is using the API. So this is your, um, like kind of your ID associated with your name. Now this is smart on their end because you could think of it as that you could shut down a server um, by making a lot of requests to it. So let's say I were to take this um, API and I sent a billion requests to it every single second. You can make a program that does that. It would cause so much traffic on the server that it would shut down the whole NASA API or the NASA database for that matter. They don't want that happening, all right? So by creating an API key, what it basically does is it says, all right, we know who's using the API and for what. And so if I were to start sending a billion requests, they would say, that guy Ben's doing, Mr. Siegel or whatever, is doing some crazy stuff with this API. Let's shut him down real quick. And so this is their way of identifying who is doing what with the API. All right, we're actually gonna take this and I want you to save this just like last time. Inside the send API request, we're gonna say let API dash key and we're gonna just save that here inside of quotes. So add some quotes to that. And this is just a way of saving this API key so we can use it later. Now, 
Now that we have that, we're going to go to Browse APIs. And NASA actually has a lot of different APIs you can use to get all sorts of different uh, data. You can get Mars rover photos. That's right, photos from Mars. That's crazy. You could have look at their NASA image and video library. They have like images from the Apollo days when they were uh, when people first went to space, space and from when we first went to the moon in the 1960s. Uh, they have like I think they have weather here, for, like space weather. Yeah, donkey space weather database. They have all sorts of fun things to explore here, but the only thing we're going to be using today is the APOD, or the astronomy picture of the day. And basically what we could do is we can make a request to the database, and they'll send me, or send us, a picture of the day for today. It's very simple to use, um, and here's usually all APIs have a little bit of documentation to read. Just like when we did the GIFI one, you can read up. Now the first thing they usually tell you is the endpoint, or where you're making a request to. This is where we're making our request to. All right, HTTPS slash slash API dot NASA slash planetary slash APOD. All right, and then they'll always tell you the parameters. The parameters are like if you want to request more specific information. So you can think of this as a menu. You can request like, oh, I want a drink with my meal. I want an entree. You know, if you want to get more specific, these are the parameters that you can attach. Now, some are required, some are not. The required parameter is the API key. To request to the NASA API, you need to provide your API key all right, in your request. These two are not required, but you can. If you want to get the picture of a day for a specific date, so the date of the APOD or the picture of the day, you could say, I want it for like February 23rd, 1997. And you could also request the HT version of it. So you can attach different parameters to this if you want, but we're going to be very straightforward today. All we're going to be doing is using this simple endpoint. And what it is, is which, once again, it's https.api.nasa.gov slash planetary.apod. And basically, this is just going to that part of the API. We're saying, hey, we want the picture of the day. And then we do question mark, API key equals, and then we're going to put our API key. And remember, you have to attach your API key to that request. So copy and paste what you see here. And then let's put that in this fetch. So you might remember last time that this function is going to send the API request, right? That's what this function is done, doing. Remember, this has an arbitrary name. We could have called this anything like NASA, your mom. I don't even know why we would name it that. But it doesn't matter what the name of this is. This is just where we happen to be making the request, all right? You might also remember a few things from last time. This is an asynchronous function. Asynchronous functions are used with APIs because what we're doing is that we're sending out a request. We're sending a request out to like Idaho, and we have to wait for data to come back. The way JavaScript usually works is it just executes all the way down. Like it'll like run each line of code, boom, 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 boom. In this case, what we have to do is we have to make it so, hey, we're gonna send out a request, and we have to wait a little bit of time for that data to come back. So that's why we, this is an asynchronous function, all right? And that's why we have this thing called a wait here. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in what we just copy and pasted right here. All right. And instead of putting demo key here, all we're going to do is we're going to interpolate. So remember, interpolate means to like put in a variable. We're going to do dollar sign and then these curly braces. And right here, we're going to put API dash key. And then we will get a response. So. Let's just go over what's going on here because we're going to be doing these APIs a lot. I want to make sure we understand every line. We have this asynchronous function called send API request. This does not matter what it was named. It was just the name we gave it. It runs whenever we click that search button. Inside of this function, the thing that happens is first we saved our API key here. And next we made a variable that waits for this fetch request to go out and come back. All right. And when we come back, we will console log whatever came back to us. And the first thing that ever comes back to you is just saying like, yes, this works, or no, this didn't work. All right, so let's give this a shot. I press search, and if you look here, we get the first thing you always look for is this thing called the status. And status 200 always means you're good to go. You will get data back, all right? The first thing we did was we saw that we got the data back, all right? Now, you might have gone to websites where you get like a 404 message, Remember, 400s are bad in the status. If you're getting 400, something went wrong. So, like, let's say I like, let's change 
I'm going to mess up my API key and add some crazy stuff here. Now let's try this again. You'll see here that it says 403, forbidden. Because I changed my API key and it doesn't exist, it's like, I don't know who this guy is. Let's not give him any data. So we're looking for that 200. When you press the search button, that means good to go. All right, now that they've okayed us, they said, you're going to get that data, buddy. The next thing we're going to do is we have to get the data out of that response. So now we're going to actually get the data. So we're going to say let data equal response.json. And JSON just means JavaScript object notation. And what that means is that we're going to get the JSON or get the data out of that response. And then let's console.log the data. And I'll tell you this, 99% of the APIs that we'll be using are going to have this simple pattern where you're going to save your API key, you're going to make a request to whatever endpoint you're using, you're going to then change that, uh, then you're going to get the data out of that response, and that's basically your two-step uh, thing. Really, this is the thing that you have to replace. Where, where are you fetching to? You'll get a response, and then you'll change it to data. So let's see what the data is. So we go back, oh, we get a promise. I forgot an important thing. Promise means uh, we promise to give you some data back. You didn't wait for it. I'm glad I made that error. So promise means you didn't wait for the data to come back. So we actually have to put the word await here. So we have to wait for the data to come back and then console log it. If you don't wait, it didn't come back from Idaho yet. We press search. Okay. And here we go. This is our data. So we, this is, um, what they've done is given us all the information about a picture. They gave us the copyright, the date, an explanation, uh, the HD URL, the media type, it's an image, the version of it, the title of it, and the URL where the actual image lives. And this is what we want, the URL. That is where the image actually exists. Now, here's what we're going to do. Now that we've got the data back, we want to do something with it. So once again, we just want to make this photo show up in the content page. So I'm going to go here. And this is now we're going to use the API data. So we want to run that function. So we're going to say use API data. We're going to pass the data to it. And then we're going to come back down here and we're going to say document query selector. We're going to do hashtag content. Why am I doing hashtag content? Because this div is our hashtag content and I want to put something in here, just like with the Giphys. So we're going to put some information in this div with the ID of content. So I'm going to say dot inner HTML. We're going to say equals to, instead of in the picture, I just want to put the explanation of the picture. So we're going to say this data dot. So it's the data dot, and this is what you can do. Why is it mad at me? Oh. This is what you do. You go search, go over here, ignore this for now. And watch this. If I want to show the actual explanation, you go this. See where it says explanation? Okay, that tells me how to access it. So when you hover it, it says explanation. So we're going to say data.explanation. All right. And so watch. If I press search, look. Look at that. The explanation showed up on the screen. We got data from NASA. They sent it back to us, and then we showed it to the user. That's freaking fantastic. Very cool. But... We also want to show them the picture of the day, right? We're not done yet. So here we go. Let's do document.querySelector. And once again, we're going to do hashtag content dot inner HTML. And so what we're going to do is this. We're actually going to do backticks. And we're going to say IMG SRC equals, and then quotes, and then close that. And what is the source of the image going to be? The source will be data. Oh, sorry, we have to interpolate. So dollar sign, curly braces, and we're gonna put here data dot, and we have to go, where do we get that image from? Oh my gosh, I hate this thing. Where, where do we get that image from? Don't worry about that error that should happen there. Image dot URL. So it tells us right there, that URL. So we go here, data dot URL. And oh, since we're adding this, we're gonna do plus equals and plus equals. Don't forget to add that. And let's see what happens. I press search. Boom! Space image with explanation. That's how it's done, folks. So that's it for this lesson on the NASA API. Don't forget to read the instructions of what you should do for your assignment. And peace out. We're done.